Hello, Lad Lane Leopards. Our next video is the story of Ferdinand versus Temple Cat. The story of Ferdinand by Monroe Leaf and drawings by Robert Lawson. Once upon a time in Spain, there was a little bull and his name was Ferdinand. All the other little bulls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. But not Ferdinand. He liked to just sit quietly and smell the flowers. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. It was his favorite tree and he would sit in its shade all day and smell the flowers. Sometimes his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. Why don't you run and play with the other little bulls and skip and butt your head, she would say. But Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here, where I can sit just quietly and smell the flowers. His mother saw that he was not lonesome, and because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was very big and strong. All the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and stick each other with their horns. What they wanted most of all was to be picked to fight at the bullfights in Madrid. But not Ferdinand. He still liked to sit just quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers. One day, five men came in very funny hats to pick the biggest fastest, roughest bull to fight in the bullfights in Madrid. All the other bulls ran around snorting and butting, leaping and jumping, so the men would think that they were very, very strong and fierce and pick them. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him, and he didn't care, so he went out to his favorite cork tree to sit down. He didn't look where he was sitting, and instead of sitting on the nice cool grass in the shade, he sat on a bumblebee. Well, if you were a bumblebee and a bull sat on you, what would you do? You would sting him, and that is just what the bee did to Ferdinand. Wow, did it hurt! Ferdinand jumped up with a snort. He ran around puffing and snorting, butting and pawing the ground as if he were crazy. The five men saw him and they all shouted with joy. Here was the largest and fiercest bull of all, just the one for the bullfights in Madrid. So they took him away for the bullfight day in a cart. What a day it was. Flags were flying, bands were playing, and all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. They had a parade into the bull ring. First came the banderilleros with long sharp pins with ribbons on them to stick in the bull and make him mad. Next came the picadores who rode skinny horses and they had long spears to stick in the bull and make him madder. Then came the matador, the proudest of all. He thought he was very handsome and bowed to the ladies. He had a red cape and a sword and was supposed to stick the bull last of all. Then came the bull. And you know who that was, don't you? Ferdinand. They called him Ferdinand the Fierce and all the banderilleros were afraid of him and the picadores were afraid of him and the matador was scared stiff. Ferdinand ran to the middle of the ring and everyone shouted and clapped because they thought he was going to fight fiercely and butt and snort and stick his horns around. But not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers and all the lovely ladies' hair and he just sat down quietly and smelled. He wouldn't fight and be fierce no matter what they did. He just sat and smelled 
and the banderilleros were mad, and the picadores were madder, and the matador was so mad he cried because he couldn't show off with his cape and sword. So they had to take Ferdinand home. And for all I know, he is sitting there still, under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. He is very happy. The end. Hello, this is Mrs. Astoya. Today I'm going to read you the story called Temple Cat. In the ancient city of Neba, there stood a temple, and in the temple lived a cat. But the cat did not just live there, the cat was the lord of the temple. Ever since he had been a tiny kitten. There had been servants who did nothing else but care for him and watch over him all day and all night. They fed him, they played music for him, they danced for him, they kept a sacred fire burning for him. They worshiped him as a god no one could remember when the people in his land had started to worship cats. And the cats certainly did not know or care. All he knew was that being the Lord of the temple was not much fun. When he tried to catch a fish in the reflecting pond, a servant rushed over and caught it for him and then cooked it up with rich herbs and spices and served it to him in a little gold bowl. If he stretched out to sleep in the sunshine up on the cool stone of the windowsill, a servant would gently lift him up, lay him on his back, down on the deep crimson pillow of his bed. When he wanted to prowl around all alone at night and catch the moss that flickered in the moonlight and scare himself silly with his own shadows, a servant would follow him about with a fan and a torch and spoil all the fun. From his perch high above the courtyard, past the reach of the tallest servant, there is the highest branches of an almond tree. He could see far beyond the temple walls. There were children playing in the streets and all the other cats in the world roamed free. So late one night, he slipped out of the temple like a wisp of smoke. First through the courtyard, then down a lane, into an alley, over a fence, across a field, up a hill, through a pasture, along a road, into a village. And finally, he came to rest in a little barn as the sun was coming up. And he slept as he had never slept before. And then he traveled his way for three more nights until he came across the edge of a sea. It was chilly and he went toward a little hut where a smoky fire burned on the sand. He moved cautiously into the ring of firelight and meowed. The nights of traveling and not eating had made him look scrawny and a little wild. No one, not even his servants from the temple, would have thought he was a god. So the man who sat on the rough stool tossed him a fish head. For the first time in his life, the little cat had a real cat supper and never had anything tasted so good. And later, when he purred and rubbed against the fisherman's leg, the man scratched behind his ears and never had anything felt so delicious. 
Early the next morning, the fisherman's children came dancing out into the bright sunshine and then stopped in their tracks. And then before the cat even knew what his dearest wish was, it came true. He played with the children and they loved him. The end. All right, Lad Lane Leopards. I hope you like both books. Don't forget to vote. You can put your vote in the comments or you can come put your vote in in the library. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to check for the AR test. Go and take those quizzes. Thank you.